Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for <laughs> Why Don't They Just? That's Ooh. how you do it. Brought that to you a... by Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Starbucks, but Starbucks if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Today's Why Don't They Just comes from the website twitter.com. <laughs> Robert Allen at Indigo asks, why don't they just raise and lower the thrust simulator jacks hydraulically from a vault below the Starship launch pad? This would make part of the operation simple for initial testing when they're launching every day. Thrust oh simulator jacks. Why don't they just raise and lower the thrust This simulator? is where we all just stare at Tim. <laughs> so, so uh, I, my understanding uh, of what the thrust uh, simulator jack is is like yeah. a thing underneath the 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 starship prototype that like pushes up and like simulates the thrust when they're doing pressure testing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see what he's saying. I see what he's saying. So they I just found out what that was, so I <laughs> Yeah. Uh I think okay, so He's basically saying, like, why don't they just keep it under there, really? Because it already is, it is already hydraulically, like, that's part of the, the action. It's just these big hydraulics that go up and, you know, push on the vehicle and, and simulate yeah. thrust. Yeah. Um, so basically, in other words, why don't they put it inside of a, a vault, he's saying, so that, like, it can launch on top of it still being there and not have to remove it? Uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, do you guys want, why don't you guys answer? And, oh, here we go. Um. Bamboo Hip Hop has some good pictures of it. So they right now they drop it underneath a crane and get it in there before they are to launch, you know, or before anything, and then they have to remove it. I just realized, does that mean that they're actually taking the rocket back off and then removing the, th the, the thrust tester and then putting the rocket back on? Seems like something they could slide underneath and slide out when they need it. They, they remove re the oh, legs. Oh, they remove the legs. Yeah, I've... I've I've got a, a, a version of this working in the car world, if you want to let me share my screen there. Sure and working. we're probably definitely getting copyright, copyright hit for this, but check this out. This is a car elevator. So you drive into it, oh, and right. it pops up out of your out of your yard, and then yep. you can kind of drive out. So is this kind of what he's saying? Like that launch thing that there you like is just living underneath it, and it just pops up and does its thing, and then they launch? I I think kind Maybe. of like that, something like that. Like it's yeah. it's underground, and then or like just... at least under a under a you know blast protective casing that could maybe like open up and and just go up and do its mm -hmm. thing when it needs to do it, and then go back down. Well, I I'll say I'm guessing it's like you know maybe if if this is a thing, and, and uh, f so much of this stuff is still literally just like bare bones. We're at the very beginning. <laughs> They've so far. Three things have taken off from that area. Not even from that pad. One thing has taken off from that pad so far. They're just constantly making changes. I wouldn't be surprised if they do some, mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe it's just something that's on skates that, you know, like a railroad track that goes up, that's what I was thinking, pushes yeah. up, and then Robo it moves grabber. itself out of the way. And yeah, like the Octograbber thing, exactly. Something like that, um, that is more automated and or like reusable. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think. I mean, they, I'm sure they've done the, the, calculus in their head about you know whether it's worth digging underneath and putting in some kind of hydraulic thing mm -hmm. and versus just sliding it in and out because it's all just sort of a testing phase and you know yep. yeah um oh this yeah, is a good like point from from get swift he says um if it's continually necessary my guess is once things are up and running we'll have a separate stand altogether mm -hmm. for that part that's not a bad idea where they'd have like a cryo test stand where they're just doing the pressure testing and the thrust you know and then the launch stand and they just keep moving. And, and we're almost seeing that now where like they're starting to move rockets like back and forth constantly already. Uh, we just saw this was one of my news items. I guess we could kind of slide into that if we want. But uh, slide, slide into yeah. those DMs, baby. <laughs> mm. But that's that's what happened this last week is serial number five that did the hop moved back out to, you know, moved back to the 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 buildings, uh, you know, in Boca Chica Village or whatever, while serial number six headed out to the pad and it's already out on the launch pad so we're seeing mm -hmm. that happen where because they want to just be testing the stuff constantly they want to learn the whole point of where they're at i keep i feel like i'm a broken record they want to learn how to be able to do this stuff without all these hiccups you know we're still yeah. like 
oh, it's scrubbed, you know, oh, a spin valve, then, oh, oh, it, yeah, it got too warm. Oh, and we saw the same type of thing when they were trying to do the super chilled props. Guys on, on boats. 9. Yeah, people on boats. Like, we were still seeing, you know, when the Falcon 9 went to super chilled propellants, there was a time where people were like, well, great. They'll never be able to launch again now. They're going to scrub constantly because they can't figure out the super chilled prop mm -hmm. stuff. It's the same thing here. People are like, oh, they can't even... They can't even fire the engine. You know, it's like it's still brand new to them, basically. Like, let them get the kinks worked out. Yeah. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see, you know, more and more infrastructure like that, where they now have a pressure test stand with a thrust puck. And then they have a launch mount and then they have another launch mount for bigger. You know, like we're just still at the mm -hmm. beginning of this stuff, you know. How many so people work there? Hundreds, maybe getting closer to a thousand now. I mean, it's. And where do they, it's, they can't live because there's only like 30 houses. <laughs> there's like 30 there. houses. There. Well, <laughs> Brownsville, there's, there's actually some big cities near there. Um, uh -huh. So Brownsville Forest, is the, right. the town. Um, I mean, if they legally can, I don't know if you can even cross the border right now, honestly. To Mexico, you know I mean? yes. Can you? Yeah. Mexico is one of the only countries that you were as Americans allowed to visit. <laughs> so Have you seen Brown that map? Literally, the entire world is like yeah. no Americans allowed except Mexico. I didn't think Mexico could. Actually. Yeah, I, I didn't think we we could even do that. I thought we were just like isolated right now. No, because the irony no, was I, that we were talking about building a wall, and then they're telling us to stay out. Yeah. No, 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 no. I have friends that go down uh, all the time. They were okay. just there last week. So, but um, so Brownsville is uh, one hundred eighty thousand, but there's McAllen, oh, okay. which is I don't know if too many people live uh, or work, and you know McAllen would be an hour and a half away. To get How far away is Brownsville? Um, Brownsville is like 15 minutes. Mm. Oh, okay. I thought it was like an hour drive or so. No, the South Padre, just because of wh how you have to get there, is almost an hour drive. Like you have to go oh. way around this big body of water thing. But yeah, even though yeah, it's like yeah. it's like literally right there, you can see it from South Padre and you can't see it yeah. from, from Brownsville. Uh, but if you were to work, so some people do work uh, in get on Boca boat. Chica and live in South Padre or uh, Sanibel Island, is, is that what it's called? There's another one. Um, but there's there's a boat. lot of actually like there's there's also um uh McAllen and Mission Texas like those are actually pretty big cities so there's a there's a decent population around there but a lot of them are moving in to work you know mm -hmm. to work for SpaceX now so yeah so it's cool. changing cra like crazy so that was kind of the news I guess for for Starship just we're seeing and and Elon even shared this cool picture. Um, I, I just wanted to share this really quick. Oh, and we did learn one more thing about it that I wanted to share. Um, so here's serial number five and serial number six next to each other again, because they were originally in that, that medium bay or the, um, and you know, together. And this is after serial number five, successful hop. There's serial number six, getting ready to head out to the pad. So we're already seeing them just, you know, back and forth, back and forth, no big deal. Um, and then he, Elon said serial number seven will be a small scale. Uh, pressure test again will be with the new alloy, so the 304X or whatever, the or the 30X or whatever they're going to be using uh, for stainless steel. But the other thing is, um, Elon says that they're using the same hex tiles, but slightly different mounting methods. So right now you can see each one of them has a little mm -hmm. bit different, those little heat shields on there. You know, you can see the little, um, but they're practicing and changing how they mount them to the skin of the vehicle because they need to be able to flex. So he says need... Need bigger section of tiles to see how they hold up with cryo shrinkage, pressure expansion, and body bending. So they're still kind of playing around with, you know, how do these mount to this vehicle? What's the best way to do that? You know, and um, how do we do this at a scale where we can, because this is the whole half of the vehicle, uh, one whole side of the vehicle is going to have these on there. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.